Welcome back to Lunch at the Market. We are uh, in the Packers green and yellow today. Uh, we had forgot yesterday when we did the show out of the office to support the pack. And with the Super Bowl coming up, obviously, better late than never. Uh, as you probably already know, we're a big fan of the green and yellow. <clears throat> the Ducks didn't do so well. Maybe the Packers can do better. But uh, interestingly enough that both uh, championships for football are from teams that are green and yellow. All right, let's take a look at the markets. Uh, we continue to be looking for further downside. We think there's much more risk to the downside right now than there is to breaking out to the upside. Again, this is about the time of the year. Last year, <clears throat> when the markets rolled over, had a really nasty uh, pullback until they rallied back up to the, about April 20th. <clears throat> and then the markets just were hideous until about the July lows. So we continue to think that the risk to the market is on the downside and not in missing the upside. That being said, uh, we are kind of running out of catalysts in terms of the banks. Um, we've taken off almost completely our entire position in Wells Fargo. We have a very, very extremely small position left in Wells Fargo. And today we are out of J.P. Morgan Chase. Uh, J.P. Morgan Chase is probably the best in class as far as a bank. Uh, it's not a valuation call. Uh, the stock trades with 11 times trailing earnings and only about eight and a half uh, times forward earnings. So it's not that the stock is expensive. <clears throat> it's just that right now we think the risk is to the downside. Um, maybe it has 10% you know, more upside to 50, uh, but then you know the downside could be back sub 40. So it has more risk to the downside again than to the upside. So risk reward, uh, banks are hated, lack of a catalyst, uh, and we just feel more comfortable sitting in cash or having extra cash uh, in case we get a nasty sell-off. We want to be opportunistic. We would look to buy J.P. Morgan back below $40 a share. That uh, is definite. It's a great franchise. We are still holding the preferreds. The preferreds pay, I think, a 6.5% percent dividend. Um, I think those are the ones that came out last year. I'd have to go back and take a look at the books to find out when we acquired those. But we are holding trust preferreds for J.P. Morgan Chase with an, a, a dividend north of 6%, and they are trading above par, which is 25 on a lot of preferred stock. Um, so we'll, we'll hold tight there because we've got dividend, obviously, uh, which we don't have in the common stock. And should the banks not institute it, there's just too many risks to the downside in terms of banks and not enough um, you know, risk to hold them. We are still long plenty of Bank of America. Again, most of our Bank of America is either common stock or January 2012, 12 and a half calls, which we A, have plenty of time, and B, we're in the money still uh, by quite a bit. So we'll hold those. Those are preferred ways to play Bank of America. Um, we do have a few put spreads, very small position in put spreads in Bank of America. We'll see how that goes. Um, there just wasn't enough premium to stay in Bank of America, or sorry, J.P. Morgan Chase, and sell put spreads against it because the volatility just isn't there. So out of Wells Fargo, basically out of J.P. Morgan Chase, except for the preferreds, uh, still in Bank of America. But really, other than that, we are pretty much out of the financial sector. I think we probably have some short gold and put spreads from, you know, way back that I think expire in April. But other than that, we're going to need to see if now if Goldman broke 160. We would be extremely interested in, in getting long Goldman Sachs if it broke 160. Um, right now in the green, Apple, Netflix, Cree, and Deckers are in the green today, as well as Mollycorp. It's certainly nice to see Deckers in the green. Um, Apple, we're really not concerned at all with our Apple position. And anytime Apple threatens that uh, 300 and, let's see, 330? Yeah, anytime Apple threatens or breaks 330, look to sell those put spreads. Uh, again, you know, $22, $23 in earnings on Apple, give it any kind of reasonable multiple, 15 16 17 gets the stock into the $400 level. So we do continue to think Apple is attractive on a valuation basis. Um, some in-the-money call spreads as well. We'll be looking at putting those on to play Apple. Um, and Freeport Mac brand is starting to get really interesting. If it breaks $100, we again would look to get long some more Freeport Mac brand than we have right now. We do have some in the money spreads, call spreads on Freeport Mac brand, but Freeport Mac brand FCX is a name that we like. Um, it, it is extremely attractive on a valuation basis. Um, trading at trailing earnings at 11 and a half, um, a market multiple would, would put the stock at least at a 14 or 15. And again, their forward PE is 8.4. So on a valuation basis, Freeport Mac brand FCX, 
we feel long shorting put spreads, getting long stock, in you know, long call spreads, pretty much anything you could take to the bullish side of Freeport Mac brand. Not to say that it can't or won't go down at some period or during periods, but it's an extremely well run company. They do have exposure to both copper and gold. Uh, they're probably, you know, the best well known copper name in the business. It's extremely cheap on a valuation basis, FCX. Um, we, I think we're short some 99, 94 put spreads in Freeport MacBrand. If it breaks uh, 100, um, obviously we'll see what, how we feel about the short put spreads, but we would add to the long side. We would actually look at getting long common stock or in the money calls. I think your 70 strike calls, if it breaks 100, are probably pretty attractive. And again, we would look to June, July, or September, possibly even. Uh, January of 2012. At that point, we'd probably do a call spread risk reversal. So we'd be long a call spread and then say short, uh, short the 60 put, long the 70, 90 put spread, something like that. So we'll take a look at it if it gets there, but just keep FCX on your radar in case it breaks 100. I think that's a place you want to get long. Chesapeake is down today about 3%, but uh, again, we took a look at the options and there really wasn't any opportunity. Um, in the options, the stock probably has to move more than that. If Freeport, or sorry, if Chesapeake gets below 25, then that's a, a level that we like in terms of CHK. Uh, okay, and then Amazon. We are. <clears throat> let me get out. Uh, get out my structure on Amazon. We are long 175 puts. Right Thursday they report, and most of the high beta names have gotten absolutely whacked uh, on earnings. Take F5, Cree, uh, I think Apple dropped 13 bucks or something. Uh, sales, Salesforce.com is down just on F5's earnings. So a lot of the high beta stuff is pretty ugly. We are long a 170, 175 put. Then we have, twi we have sold twice the amount of 175 puts. We've sold the 160 puts, right? So we've got, let me see if I can do this. Uh, we're sh we're long 175 and then short double the amount of 160 puts and then we're long the 140 puts. So in effect, what you have is uh, long long put spread and short put spread. That's basically what you have. So you have uh, two two of these, the 160s that were short. So that makes this a short put spread. We're long at 140, uh, short at 160, short at 160, long at 175. Okay, see how that works. So basically what you want is for Amazon to drop somewhere between 175 and 160. That's the ideal profitability. Just above 160 would be absolutely terrific. You get to capture all the money in the short put spread. You get to capture most of the money in the long 175, 170 put spread. This is from Mike Coe on Options Action last Friday. Um, he did a terrific job. It's called a put tree because uh, the structure looks like I don't know, maybe you could call it a put diamond. It looks a little bit like a diamond. All right, uh, that's, a, that's a nice bearish way that we like to play Amazon and to say that, well, if it gets down so far, um, you know, we would consider being long at 160. Uh, we'd have a, a, a stop basically at 140, okay? So that's, uh, also you have the opportunity to roll that short put spread down and out. So anyway, there's all kinds of things that you can do with that uh, because the strikes are so wide, but Long the 170, short double the amount of 160s, and then long again at 140. So make sure the amount of one long 175, 140s match each other, and then uh, whatever that number, say it's one and one, then you do you'd sell two 160s. Say it's two and two, then you'd sell four 160s. Okay, so just keep that in mind. So let's say for instance you're long two 175s. You'd short four 160s and then be long two 140s. Okay, so in, in effect, it gives you a long put spread all the way down, boom, and then you've got a short put spread from here. So that's the trade structure on Amazon. We like a nice bearish bet on Amazon because, again, the high flyers have been slapped around a little bit on earnings. They report on Thursday. I'm sure the you know the market is expecting perfection and it probably won't get it. Thanks for tuning in again today. Hope that helps. Again. The theme uh, for us this month has been to get, continue to take risk off the table and get smaller and look for opportunities. You may be getting them. All right. Thanks for uh, tuning in again today. Have a great day, and we'll see you tomorrow.